Uh, good afternoon. Uh, let me first thank the organizers for inviting me for this uh, uh, session to share our experience in uh, using DHIS2. So we have been using it for last uh, eight years. This is the eighth year. Um, uh, and <coughs> I'm sorry, I have a bit of a bad uh, sore throat, so my uh, apologies for my wife. Okay, so uh, I'm Dr. Kaushalya. I'm the consultant committee physician in charge of the monitoring and evaluation unit of the Family Health Bureau. Now, Family Health Bureau is the uh, national focal point in the Ministry of Health uh, for maternal and child health. Uh, now, even though, uh, now, when it comes to MCH, maternal and child health in Sri Lanka, as a country, over the years, over the last 10 decades, nearly 100 years, we have achieved a lot. And most of our indicators are kind of far uh, with uh, most of the developed countries in the world. So we have a huge success story behind, and uh, we have a very well established implementation uh, system in place for the last uh, nearly, uh, the, the first health unit, the Medical Officer of Health unit was started in 1926, so nearly 100 years of history. Uh, so, <coughs> when we talk about MCH, now even though we started as maternal and child health, now of course the program has evolved, uh, covering the most of the life, uh, uh, the stages in the life cycle. Right? So, um, when it comes to uh, uh, the national program, the MCH program, or now we call it the reproductive maternal chi maternal newborn child and adolescent health program um, the entry point into the system is at the identification of newly married couples right? so it's the public health midwife who is the grassroots level uh, service provider right? Uh, who is responsible for identifying all the newly married couples in her area uh, and register them with us and uh, we start the total program uh, from there onwards. Right, okay. Yes, so, uh, so as I told you, uh, the, uh, the National Focal Agency is the Family Health Bureau. Now, we are kind of covering, uh, the, the national program covers all stages in the life cycle. So, uh, newly married couples, then the pregnancy, neonatal period, then under five children, then the school children, and then comes the adolescent health. So, uh, likewise, we offer uh, uh, evidence-based intervention packages at each and every level. So this uh, uh, service delivery is through several uh, sectors. So we have uh, the government sector, uh, we have the, pub uh, the public health, the MOH system, and then we have the curative arm, the hospitals, right? Uh, we have the most of the, uh, the hundred, nearly 100% uh, of our deliveries are taking place in hospitals. So the newborn care and the uh, maternal care, there's a huge uh, role played by the curative hospitals. And then uh, uh, now expanding into the private sector as well, because most of, uh, sometimes nowadays, uh, people tend to seek uh, services from the private sector as well. So all these uh, information are there in our systems from all these sectors. So we have, um, for each stage in the life cycle, we have uh, evidence-based intervention packages and we have the, uh, different, different strategic plans for the country. So all the monetary mechanisms are also incorporated into the strategic plans. So all the indicators that we need to uh, monitor at the national level, this, uh, provincial, district, and the uh, MOH level are there in these strategic plans. 
So when it comes to the country, as you all know, we have nine provinces and uh, 26 uh, health districts, and they are further divided into the <laughs> medical officers of health areas. So we have 360 such areas, uh, and they are further divided into the public health midwife area, the PHM area. So we, we have nearly 7,000 PHM areas in, uh, in the country. And uh, we get information from each and every public health midwife area in the country monthly. So aggregate data we are getting from the field level. And also we have uh, uh, the government and the private schools uh, being cared by the medical officers of health, especially when it comes to uh, the school medical inspection and also the school health service. Uh, so. Uh, now more than 10,000 schools are also being cared and the information are collected and entered in our system as well. So when, it, when you look at the last year, 2023, out of the 22 million, um, nearly 10 million, nearly half of the population's data are there in our system, either in the uh, paper-based uh, registers or in the digital system. So uh, 3.9 eligible families, uh, 245,000 pregnancies registered last year, 225,000 live births have been registered with us, uh, 1.4 million under five children are being cared uh, under our system, school children uh, 1.4 million, so likewise, uh, nearly half of the population's information are there. It's a fairly a big uh, information system that we are talking about. And uh, we have a very well-established monitoring mechanism, which has been there for the last uh, nearly 100 years, and uh, uh, at least for the last uh, 40 years. And we have a, a very well-established su supervision uh, mechanism as well, because we have, uh, identi we have uh, designated supervising staff categories uh, in the MOH level looking at uh, the service provision as well as the quality of data. So we have a, a, a mechanism in place. Now, uh, when it comes to this information collection, we have a long history, but this MCH information, RMNCH information, uh, the more organized kind of a manner information system was developed in 1986. So, uh, this system has been very properly planned from the grassroots level, from the client, from the individual to the national level. The data flow is very well laid down. So that is one of the, uh, the underlying causes for the success, uh, for the, uh, to, uh, to have this system in place for the last uh, nearly uh, four decades. And what we really did in 2017 is the digitalization of the existing system. So it was anyway, uh, very well functioning system at that time. So for this, we used the free and open source software DHIS2, uh, and uh, because uh, it uh, doesn't involve any cost in, in, the, in development and uh, implementation and maintaining, and also the features that were there in the DHIS2 caters uh, all the requirements of the other national program. So that's exactly, that's why we wanted to use the DHIS2 and this. So when it comes to uh, reporting, so we get 100% reporting from each and every district, each and every PHM, each and every field clinic, right? So this is a, another thing that I have to say. Uh, so we get 100% uh, information coverage every month uh, from this system, right? So we can, <coughs> sorry, kind of monitor the performance of each and every PHM, public health midwife, by looking at, even at the national level I have access to do, uh, I can kind of monitor each and every PHM uh, which uh, the district staff is supposed to do. And also uh, yearly trends we can monitor for the PHM area. And when it comes to say um, the, the performance uh, uh, by PHM areas, then uh, the trends over the years, uh, and then district comparisons, uh, then uh, this uh, minimum and ma maximum value, with the, uh, the, whether the, the, the performance are within the targets, that also we can kind of monitor. 
<coughs> then the trends over the year, national, uh, MOH-wide, district-wide, everything uh, uh, that we can monitor from this. And also uh, the, the availability of cadres, logistic management, all these are also incorporated into the system. So it's a kind of a fairly comprehensive system that we are having. And uh, we, ha we have uh, uh, given a uh, bit uh, 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 focus on the quality of uh, the data as well. So we are monitoring the timeliness of the reports. And also uh, there, there are so many validation rules that we have introduced into the system. So nearly uh, 250 validation rules are there in place. Uh, so um, uh, to improve the accuracy of the data. And then we have incorporated the WHO data quality checks, uh, uh, the application also into the system. Uh, so we have taken care of, uh, we have kind of, uh, we have focused more, a little bit more on the quality of the data that they are providing. And uh, as shown in some of the earlier presentations, we also have created the dashboards. So. Uh, for each level, they have their own dashboards uh, for them to monitor monthly, uh, or quarterly, and annually uh, the, uh, the indicators that they need to do. So these are some of the dashboards. And we have a very good uh, established review mechanism. So the medical officers of health, the MOHS, are supposed to conduct monthly conferences in which they are supposed to monitor the performance of each and every public health midwife and each and every public health inspector, uh, the clinic performance and all. So they, can, they, they use their own dashboards or they have key performance uh, indicators that they have identified based on their requirement and their uh, annual plans. So uh, then uh, the monthly conferences are happening uh, using the data right, uh, already in the system and uh, uh, they, they use that data for action. And also uh, quarterly, the regional director of health service is supposed to conduct um, quarterly MCH reviews uh, where they look at the quarterly performance of, uh, within the district and uh, identify the uh, areas that need uh, strengthen. So annually, uh, the national level, me uh, my, and my team, uh, review all the MOHs in the country. So it, we do it, we start it from uh, month of uh, um, uh, end of February like, so uh, uh, within a four or five months, we uh, kind of uh, review all the activities by MOH in the country. So all the 360 MOHs have been, uh, are, are, are been reviewed within this uh, uh, MCH reviews. And uh, data dissemination uh, is through our uh, website as well as we publish the annual, data, annual reports uh, yearly based on the information we have. So other than this information system, now this ERHM, my Electronic Reproductive Health Management Information System, that is uh, the main information system that had been there for the last eight years. Uh, it's basic, uh, <coughs> mainly aggregated data. Other than that, now uh, we have uh, used some of the other features that are there in the DHIS2 in various other uh, activities as well. So the ERHMIS2 is basically uh, looking at the individual level data. So we have uh, now, as I told you, the service provision, especially the delivery services are happening in uh, private hospitals. So we have established uh, uh, event capturing module. So each and every delivery that is taking place in a private hospital, the information is captured in the uh, event capture using the DHIS2. Uh, and it's established island by all the uh, all 84 uh, private hospitals uh, where deliveries are taking place uh, uh, enter data into the system. So this is it. And then uh, uh, the same system was used in several other, especially when, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. We wanted to uh, now, uh, uh, because we didn't know exactly what what is happening. There are a lot of uh, uh, 
pregnant women uh, became positive for COVID-19. So we wanted to see whether there are any effects of COVID-19 to the pregnancy outcome and the newborn. So we kind of start tracking all the uh, uh, COVID-19 positive pregnant women. And also we, uh, uh, Sri Lanka is one of the countries to introduce uh, vaccination again, pregnant mothers, uh, COVID vaccination again, pregnant mothers very early. So uh, there again, there were some uh, concerns whether this uh, the vaccine could cause any uh, effects to the uh, pregnancy outcome. So we started tracking all the uh, pregnant women who were given uh, the, COVID, uh, the vaccine against the COVID-19. And then um, now, as I told you, one of the very uh, uh, strongholds in our uh, MCH program is that all the deliveries are taking place in hospitals, so we, uh, in, in an institution. Uh, so there are a few threats recently we observed for this. So we have now started tracking any home delivery other than an institution. Uh, we, are, uh, we are kind of uh, investigating them uh, and uh, get the more information and even the locations of households where the uh, home deliveries are happening. It's very, very few in number, but we do uh, uh, investigate them. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, distribution for last year. And also with the economic crisis that we faced last year, Um, <coughs> uh, we had some issues in the nutrition, uh, especially under five children's nutrition monitoring. So we wanted to, because we saw uh, the number of uh, children with uh, nutrition issues going up. So we wanted them to be followed up uh, uh, closely. For that, we introduce an uh, Android application again based on the uh, DHIS2 default uh, uh, app, uh, the Android app. Um, and we ask all the public health midwives to register the severe acute malnourished children in the system and to follow them up monthly to see the outcome. So that is another thing that uh, we, uh, uh, we have. Uh, doing uh, from uh, 2022 following the economic crisis. Right? Uh, so the one of the, the issues that we are encountering is now uh, the trainings. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, the PHMs, PHIs, and the, some of the supervising staff categories, the, they remain in the MOH level, but when it comes to doctors, uh, they go on their annual transfer schemes. So the, uh, maybe every four years they are in transfer orders. So each year we get a new set of doctors coming to the public uh, health sector without uh, the knowledge of these information systems and all. So we need to keep on training them. So for that we have now introduced this uh, learning management system and we have uh, uh, the, uh, the ERHMIS training in the system so that they can do uh, their own training uh, every year uh, when they are appointed as medical officers of health. <coughs> and it's a kind of a certificate course. So all these in, uh, so the systems that we have developed up to now are uh, in-house developments, not a single cent of government or the donor uh, funds were involved. So it's all done by our health informatic doctors and the public health doctors in the uh, system. So uh, and uh, uh, it, basically all of them are kind of uh, in-house. And we uh, managed to receive several uh, appreciations as well. And uh, the next step from here is to go into in capturing the individual data data. So we are in the process of trying to digitalize the child health development record and the pregnancy record and the uh, eligible family register. So there are, uh, th that is the next step. But uh, it has some challenges. It's not that easy. Not easy as uh, uh, the path we have taken up to now. 
So right now we are in the process of re revising the whole RHMIS system, a comprehensive review, uh, looking at what exactly we want as, a, as, as an actual requirement. And we have to look at the, the data management IT system, uh, of, uh, especially the HR human resource, because it is something very difficult to uh, uh, keep because it's uh, always changing and we are in the uh, identify we need to identify the potential gaps and based on that only we we, we are in the uh, process of going to the next level that is to capture the individual level uh, information so we have started working on this it's challenging but uh, we are in the move okay thank you very much